PI of a EFC stacking grant, uh, the title is title of the grant is development of functional organization of the visual circuit in mice. And acronym is circuit assembly. And the grant period is uh, from April 2015 to March 2020 for five years. And I'm based in uh, Danish Research Institute of Translational uh, Neuroscience, downright Aarhus University, Denmark. Aarhus University is in the middle of a Jetland Peninsula in Denmark. It's part of the continent. And first, uh, I'd like to uh, explain my background. I earned my bachelor and doctor of veterinary medical uh, doctor at the University of Tokyo, Japan, 2003. And then I did my PhD work at the Graduate University for Advanced Sciences, Okazaki, Japan. It's also called the Sokendai. And my PhD work was supported by GSPS uh, fellowship. <coughs> and then I moved to Basel, Switzerland, where I did my postdoc work with uh, Professor Otto de Roska at the uh, Friedrich Mischer Institute, Basel, Switzerland. It's part of the Novartis uh, company. And my postdoc work was supported by Envo Long Term Fellowship and GSPS Fellowship. Uh, I really appreciate those uh, supports. And at the last, in the last year of my postdoc, I applied for ERC starting grant and uh, it was awarded. So I started my own research group in Denmark in 2015, where I'm still working. <coughs> and um, so my panel was life science, but it is neuroscience and the new neural disorders. So I'm working on neuroscience. Uh, and the amount awarded was 1.5 million euros per year. And I'm using this grant mainly for salary of three members, including myself and one PhD student and one research assistant. Initially, two of my postdocs were part of the ERC member, but they were awarded both my three uh, fellowships, so uh, they were taken out of this ERC and uh, those three people were recruited. I have uh, eight, eight or nine people in my group in total. And in this slide, I'd like to little bit explain about my research. So um, I'm working on investigating neuronal circuit of visual system using mice as a model system. And our goal is to link from genes to circuits, computation to brain function. Brain, brain can be studied at different hierarchical levels. Gene circuits from micro scale to macro scale brain function. Uh, however, I think it's important to uh, link studies at different hierarchical levels because, for example, in many brain disorders, the symptom and genes responsible for the such diseases are known, but underlying circuit mechanisms are unclear. So by understanding uh, impaired circuits in various types of neurological diseases, one could invent genetic repair or gene therapies to restore function of circuits, cell types in brain. And we use a lot of uh, transgenic mice, so, it, so having mice co costs a lot. So really, ERC grant was really crucial for uh, my research. And we also use very extensive uh, microscopes, like the two photon uh, microscopes, that allow us to image the activity of neurons in vivo, in awake animals. And those uh, microscopes require very extensive lasers 
And also without ERC, but I think it was, this research program was not possible. And why Europe? So why? Uh, so this is a more of a general idea why Europe is a nice, good place to do science. And for personal point of view, why Denmark I'm doing science? Yeah, of course there's a you know long history of science starting from thousands of years ago. Um, so all Greek, uh, Roman, a huge uh, culture is inherited. Still now it's so where I think science started. So a lot of cultures, so culture to support basic research and tradition to invest in young researchers and less hierarchical structures and compared, compared to Japan. So this uh, helped us to really have a front, open discussion that foster science creativity. And attract researchers from all over the world. So it's easy to attract people from Western world because the uh, culture is similar, more compared to Asia. And also languages, the people in many, most of European countries, people speak good English, that help us uh, Japanese people to communicate in English. And then why Denmark? So there are excellent opportunities for funding. Denmark has many uh, pharmaceutical companies think of funding agencies like the Ludovic Foundation, Novo Nordisk Foundation, and Carlsberg, which is a company for beer. And those uh, com funding agencies provide really generous funding. And also, large investment in neuroscience. For example, Lundbeck Foundation uh, established Brain Prize a few years ago, which is uh, one of the largest uh, prizes for neuroscientists. And also, our institute was uh, just established, that right, was established just uh, three years ago by Lundbeck Foundation. This is also in line with this uh, investment in neuroscience. Denmark. And flat structure. Uh, so flat, not only land is flat, but also the society is flat. So really, Danish culture is really in opposite to Japan. So they are really flat, so uh, there's no hierarchy. And also, there's no top-down consensus is important. In that sense, Japan is similar, but uh, it's really flat. Uh, uh, and uh, and Dandrite, where I work now, is new Nordic node of EMDR, which is a European Molecular Biology Laboratories, which is one of the uh, best uh, research uh, organizations in Europe. So there are many nodes of EMDR in different European countries, like Germany, England, Spain, and France. And also, the four Nordic countries each has own this Nordic node of EMDR. So there are a lot of uh, interactions between EMDR nodes. And I think uh, Katya already uh, explained this, so I go quickly. So what I like is that uh, anyone in the world can apply with the condition that you have a, a post, post institution. And it's bottom up, so you can propose what you really want to do. Not, so, it, so I think, uh, because it's government cannot you know, credit what will become a Nobel Prize, so it's good to uh, leverage the ideas from research for good science. And also, this was already explained. But uh, this uh, grant application instruction says that publications without the presence as co-author of their PhD supervisors will be evaluated. And actually, I was frightened to see this because my key publications included PhD supervisors. 
So, but the but the, the supervisor was not uh, corresponding all the time. So when I was postdoc, I was using <coughs> transgenic mice from my PhD supervisor in Japan. So we were kind of doing collaboration. That's why I had to put my PhD supervisor. But I didn't know that uh, this is important for ERC grant. So I was very worried about this. But in the end, I was awarded. So I don't know if this is really a stupid thing. Maybe if the supervisor is really corresponding all that, maybe that could be a problem. And this is uh, my road to the grant agreement. So since I was offered conditional group leader position in Germany, so this conditional means that they can provide, they were able to provide only space. So to start a group, I had to get grants, which support my own salary and also salary for members, equipment. And then the, this institution uh, suggested to me to apply for ERC starting grants. The deadline of which was just in 40 days. So I had to prepare this application in 40 days. And um, yeah, this was a very hard time. Um, however, uh, just after this conditional offer, I was offered another group leader position in Denmark with a very generous startup. So uh, I decided to uh, go to Denmark before, just one week before deadline ERC. So I couldn't change the host. So I just submitted ERC to the German Institute as a host. So it, it was a bit of a complicated situation. Uh, and then, um, then July, I was invited for interview. Then in August, I went to training course for interview in Germany, organized by German uh, National Contact Point of ERC, where I had a one-day uh, course where we, so there were like eight to ten attendees, all of them were invited for interview. So we presented in front of others, and we criticized each other. And also a uh, lecturer came, and, uh, gave us advice about how to present, uh, including how, how to move the hands and some very detailed instructions about how to talk. Yes, I think this helped us a lot. And then I went to interview in Brussels in October. Then, um, in November, I was recommended for ERC starting grant. And, but I was still very much worried because I already turned down the offer from German institutions, so I had to change the host institute before grant agreement was signed. So this period was a very stressful moment, so I had to write many emails, communication with the ERC about how to change. Uh, the host institution. And it was finally approved in January and in February grant agreement was signed. So it took uh, one year from uh, having host institution until grant was signed. So, and during this period I was hired by my supervisor in Switzerland. So I had, I had to thank him. During this period, I couldn't do experiments very much, so yeah, he was, yeah, I have to. So I think he, finding good supervisor is also a uh, key. <laughs> <laughs> and what helped my ERC grant application? So I had only 40 days for preparing applications, so I have to really focus uh, on this. I, I had a guest researcher visiting my lab, but uh, I couldn't take care of the researchers. So I feel sorry about that. <laughs> and so first, 
thing I did was that we collected three successful applications. Two were from host institution and one were from my supervisor at that time. And I just read them, how they wrote it, what's the logic. So I think this is very important. And uh, I also read application instruction very carefully, what they require, and so on. And I asked uh, three people to read and comment on my application. Yeah. Not just friends, but uh, the people who really know the rules and experiences. And so attending interview practice course by this national contact point was very helpful. So they, uh, yeah, it was the like, uh, same thing as Katya already today explained us. So I think knowing the rules is really important. And I also practiced talks at my institute and post institute. And uh, I got feedback. And also at home, I took just a video myself and saw it and just uh, corrected it. It's very difficult to uh, see how I talk in front of people. So this, this really helped. To improve how to pronounce English and also how to talk to other people. And, and check the past interview panel and prepare for possible questions. So, as Katia explained, the panel changed in alternate every second year. Mm -hmm. So, I checked who could be a potential uh, interview panel and uh, just uh, listed potential questions and I prepared. Uh, Answers and this helps a lot. And um, I, those three people read my uh, ERC application, and one was uh, Professor Otto Roska, who was my postdoc supervisor. He was also awarded of ERC starting grant 2010 and advanced grant 2015. So he had a lot of experiences in grant writing. And also my friend, he was a postdoc. Shout, shout. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Stuart Trenholm, who was a postdoc in Roskala, and now he's an assistant professor at McGill University, Canada. And also Professor Ed uh, Erwin Mayer at the Max Planck Institute, Germany, from Post Institute side. And he is a Nobel Prize laureate. And uh, so he was, uh, Stuart was an uh, English native speaker, so I think it helped to polish my English. And Boton uh, knows how to write grant, so he corrected my logic. And in the end, of course, I sent my application to professional English proofreader. And this is my personal view of tips for grant writing, inspired by Ryohei Yasuda's blog, uh, Neuroscience Notes. So uh, this is, I think this is not only for ERC grant, but it's, it's good for general grant writing. So one is to understand the rule and the market, to check your competitiveness. Have good ideas and preliminary data. So I put a lot of good preliminary data on the grants application. I think that helps a lot. And have a clear central hypothesis and an objective. So it's good to have really one big uh, hypothesis. And Toward the big hypothesis, objective, three or uh, a few specific aims should be established to reach to this goal. And I think aims should not depend on previous aims. So for example, so if the aims depend on previous aims, then if the first aim fails, second aim will not just make sense. So it's, so, yeah. 
So it will be like a castle on the sun, so it will be blown away easily. And also, this is uh, important to strike in simple logic. I think reviewers are very busy people, busy scientists, maybe not in the same field, so it should be easy to be follow the logic. And backup strategies in case of unexpected data failure. And it's good important to use figures. So to explain just the overview or flowchart of experiment. And then reviewers must be convinced that you should receive the graph. So I feel that the <coughs> just not idea, but your competitiveness is also checked. And the proposed grant should, should be based on your uh, strength. That makes you a unique applicant. So I think you should, you should be the only one who could do this. That's the idea. And this is my actual budget which I applied with. So total amount was 1.5 million euros. And indirect cost is 25% of direct cost, so it was 300,000. So actually, the amount I was freely used was uh, 1.2 million. And out of this, I used uh, 947,000 for direct personal. In Denmark, uh, salary is very high, so I, this was the so it's reached this big amount already. So the rest was used for other direct costs, such as uh, reagents, animals, and uh, travel and people publications. And this indirect cost go to ECG. And this is the, my last slide. Uh, this is about my experience with interview. So, interview room looked like this. So, I was standing here in front of a panel members. A PC projecting PowerPoint to this. And there was a timer. So, the time is very sharp. So it is really cut at 10 minutes. Also. The talk was 10 minutes, and the QA was 15 minutes. And panel members, 14 people, I think, were announced after this interview, so I didn't know who will be, who were there. Except for chair, chair was announced in advance. But actually, chair didn't say anything during the interview. Other people asked me questions. And the facilitator was uh, yeah, facilitating the discussion. And yes, yeah, so, yeah. And I had to go to this building a uh, few hours before, and I had to I had to be in the waiting room where other candidates are also waiting. It was very uh, stressful. <laughs> <laughs> People uh, try to show that they have uh, friends in the room, so they talk to other victims. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think uh, I used twenty five minutes already, so. You can use more time if you need to. If you have other uh, slides or the things that you want to show, please go ahead. Uh, I think this is the last slide, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then maybe you can take uh, questions from the room. He's the, the only one who... I think he's the only one in the room who has an ERC grant, so... I'm, I'm sure you have questions. I'm, I'm pretty sure you do. Thank you for your presentation. How did you get access to those successful applications? You mentioned in your presentation you got some examples of previous successful ERC yes. grants. Yes. So where could you get these resources? Oh yeah, so uh, just the host institute was uh, very supportive for my application. So the host institute had a uh, to at least two or three uh, ERC grantees. So they just shared their applications with me. And uh, my postdoc supervisor was also running st starting grant. So I just got, got same total three. So they are not public? 
not public only available, personally. Maybe Katia, you want to comment as well on that? Uh, I also have a few errors. Yes, no, they are not public, except if the grantee wants to make them public. That's the, so some of them they do. So uh, if, you, if you want to look for some, even though you do not know someone at their own institution like uh, Nina Hanasa did, maybe you can just look it up. You might find some. I actually uh, think there is one on the website of Pure Access Japan. Uh, one of the countries from Spain, I think, uh, shared it with us. Uh, so maybe you can at least find one there, but I'm sure you can find others. Maybe. Yeah, I would, I would, I do, I, I would say the same. I, I think you can find online, um, but perhaps the best thing is really to contact uh, people. And normally in Europe there are really many host institutions that have many grants, so I think you will be able to find um, grantees who share uh, the proposal with them. It can be um, dangerous to just um, check any um, um, proposal that is on the website. Sometimes they are old and the uh, rules change. So um, perhaps you should really check if you can trust this uh, proposal. Um, once you have your host institution, then you can also check with your NCP. I know that some NCPs, um, for example the Austrian NCP, they organize proposal reading days. So um, candidates can come to Vienna and they get proposals that they are just in the room, they read the proposal, they can't take them with them, but they can read them. Um, and other countries do perhaps similar things in Switzerland, and we don't do that because uh, we have um, 700 grantees, so we're sure that every candidate has access to, to, um, to grants. Um, but but also contact also your NCP, they can help you too. Thank you for sharing your experience. So my question is uh, about your postdoc uh, experience in Europe. So, so how much this, this, did this experience help you in, uh, in getting the grant? Is, uh, was it crucial or just pushed you, give you some, some I mean, um, pushing effort or what? Yeah, uh, oh, you can give some comments. Um, yeah, first of all, um, yeah, but they, the ERC look at only excellence in science, so it should, should not matter where you did postdoc. Uh, I'm talking about personal, personally. Personally? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, yeah, first of all, I was not good at English no, language. Uh, when I studied postdoc, I couldn't speak very well. Yeah, not, yeah, so, but uh, and this thing, and, uh, yeah. Of course, uh, um, I, I wanted to do some experiments which I couldn't do in Japan, which was not available in Japan. So I had to go to Europe, so to this specific uh, post. So it allowed me to learn necessary skills, experimental skills, which I wanted to equip with it. And also, Oh, personally, um, my view, so, so I got more like a nice view. I, my how to see the world change. So uh, in Japan, I, so I didn't know different, how different culture systems works. So I, I learned, I learned that there are many different people working together. And yeah, in, yeah of course, it, in Japan, now, in some institutes, it's very international. So it doesn't have to be Europe. But uh, in my institute, all members were all Japanese people. And uh, very hierarchical uh, group. And uh, I learned a new way of uh, communication with people. and. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to describe in language, but uh, I think it changed a lot. Yeah, I, I really, I feel that uh, it was good for me to go to Europe. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Hi, 
Well, thank you very much for sharing your insights. Um, I was wondering, could you give some more advice on how you went about contacting host institutions, for example, or how you chose your host institutions um, yeah. in terms of the research they do or the facilities or <coughs> the interest? Yeah, uh, sorry, how, how you... How, how did you kind of decide which host universities right, or host institutions right. to apply to, for example? Yeah, so first, of course, I, I, I think uh, I just applied to any possible institute. <laughs> <laughs> I had no choice, so I had to accept what I was offered. So I just applied to like 50 type 0 <laughs> institutes in Europe and US. Actually, 40 universities in the US and 10 institutes in Europe. And in the end, I was offered only 4 institutes in Europe, 0 in the US. And then, among the 4 institutes, the Danish institute offer was the most generous. And I really needed the expensive microscopes later, so I just decided this institute. So, but uh, this institute was just a very new institute starting a uh, new neuroscience. So there was no really neuroscience circuits, neuroscience in the institute before. So it took time to really build up new research environment. I had to build new virus rooms, or reform some teaching rooms into uh, lab laboratories. But yeah, that's how I decided. <laughs> How did you decide, or what was the process in selecting the other team members? Yes. Um, first, I posted the advertisement in different uh, sites online Nature Jobs, European Neuroscience Society, and Japan Neuroscience. Society. And also, I attended the conferences, and uh, in the, I used the last slide of my talk to advertise my group and say that I'm looking for postdocs. And this helped. So then I found very, three very good uh, postdocs when I started. All of them, two were from the uh, US, and one was from Europe. And, Maybe yeah. if I can comment also about that. Actually, all of the DRC, uh, all of the offers for jobs within the DRC teams are automatically advertised on the Euraxis job portal. So, uh, if if some of you are, I hope not, but if some of you are discouraged to apply to an DRC grant, you can still be part of an DRC 